I think you're going to have to learn in your life to learn how to submit to uh, something that's greater than you and know that you'll know when it's beyond your own mind. Uh, you'll uh, know yeah. it's just not some thought that you want. God has put desire in you, but you're going to know when he's activating that desire by his spirit. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that desire to know him came alive in me. Wow. At that point. And I, I really went forward and I gave my life to the Lord. I, I got baptized. And then things over the next six years got very bad in our family life. And um, my dad died a very tragic death at 39. Hmm. And I, I was left as the firstborn son. As I said earlier, now I'm over all this inheritance of land and cattle and horses. How many and acres? Barns. How, how big? How many acres? Oh, it's probably close to 600 acres. Wow. And so, and all of the process that we had was that, well, you don't want to be that when you're 16. Uh, you don't, you want, you really aren't looking to have uh, that responsibility uh, when you're young like that. So uh, for a couple of years, I can honestly say I rebelled against the Lord. And then I went over one, my first year in college. Were, were you upset that your father died? Well, I knew that was inevitable. He had gone in a direction he shouldn't go. Mm. And I knew that we were in some interesting times, which I really don't talk about. I, I've never really overshared about the darkness that we were so, had so in, invaded our inheritance. But that's why I write so many books about and understand warfare. Because, so you, but you weren't blaming God for his death. No, 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 no. God took him. God took him because it got so bad. I, that's one of the reasons I came to know that I, I knew that about the Lord too. Mm. There's a sin unto death. He says, don't pray for it, but he can cause it to happen. Wow. And, and so I came to know about that when I was 16 years old. I knew that the Lord had taken my dad. And uh, so, no, I didn't. Ha I, I was mad about all the responsibility because I wanted to party and have a good time and be like normal kids. And I had a lot of responsibility as a young, a very young man at 16. So and yet I was a, a straight A student and I was very uh, determined. And yet I can say I started pulling away from the Lord for two years. Okay. And then my first year of college, I went over to see my grandmother uh, to have lunch with her because we were very close. And she <sighs> said, um, she said, uh, you know, you're going in a direction that you're not supposed to go in. And uh, like, I refuse for you to end up not in what God has planned for you, like your dad did. Because now she loved my dad. My mother's mother loved my dad. And he just went off in a wrong direction. And she said, I refuse for that to happen to you. And I said, you know, Mama, I didn't come over here for you to preach at me. I just can't. You know, when you're 17 or 18, you know more than Jesus, you think. And <laughs> I just came over here to see you. And she brought my food, set it down in front of me. And with the back of her hand, now, I am not a kid that got disciplined a whole lot because I wasn't a bad kid. She turned around and backhanded me out of the chair. Right off the chair. Right off the chair. And she said, I won't bring it up again. I'm going to let God deal with you. Wow. Now, I don't know that she ever did that to my dad, my, my grandmother. I, I knew she was capable of doing it. But something happened in me. And when she said those words, I'm going to let God deal with you. You get that icky feeling all in you because you don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, that was at the beginning of the summer of 1972. And by the beginning of September of that year, I ended up in the hospital under oxygen 
uh, yeah. I, I, and so you said something before we started this that the Lord had had shown you that I'd had some near death experience. I yeah. actually almost died. Just before and, the program started, I, I wrote down on a piece of paper. I said, "Did you ever have a near death experience that resulted in your turnaround?" I, I, I so almost I died. My, my, I had a lung that collapsed. I, I really went through a very very difficult time. And uh, so I ended up in the hospital under oxygen. Two things happened. My grandmother was a nurse, the one that knocked me out of the chair in that hospital, of course. And she came in, pointed her finger and said, I told you this was going to happen. I've let the Lord do this. So some way or another, I knew the Lord had put me in the hospital. Hmm. And uh, then the Lord put me in the room with the Pentecostal pastor. <laughs> That's how sovereign God is in our lives, people. And he introduced me to somebody I didn't know very well. That person is Holy Spirit. Wow. And so when I, in 1972, on September the 11th, I ended up meeting Holy Spirit in an incredible, incredible way. And he visited me for three days. Hmm. And uh, my life radically changed, and I can honestly say I never really looked back after that. And I have I came to know Holy Spirit. Can and you describe what that was like? It it was almost like it wasn't just knowing Jesus, uh, people. It was I mean you you. I could read and I was intelligent enough to see what Jesus was like. But Holy Spirit, it was almost like my cells were infused by a person. Uh, and all of a sudden, I was quickened uh, to have some power to overcome my past and to move into the future. And uh, I, all of a sudden, I could see the movement of God around me because Holy Spirit had quickened me so much. And uh, I have to say that was the turning point in my life. It was, it, salvation was the beginning, but that was the turning point That's in my life. That's very interesting. I've, I've done many, many uh, conversion interviews, and I've never heard that part. Now, were you prophetic before or after did it initiate with that Holy Spirit thing? I have to say, I always could tell the future. Really? Some, I, 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 uh, you have to look at both sides of my family. One was a very spiritual side with the Lord who were very, now that I know they were prophetic, but they would know what was going to go on and they would talk about it. Then you had my dad's side, and a lot of them were spiritists, and therefore they were truly prophetic. You know, but spiritists are just prophetic people that aren't redeemed. They're, they're operating in a dark side. Therefore, the supernatural was not difficult for me to ever to see or understand. It was never difficult. And what happened to me when Holy Spirit came in, all of a sudden I knew the person that was over the supernatural. Wow. And therefore I began to be aware of him and to be aware of evil in a way I had never been aware of evil. And I could see uh, the motivation of darkness versus how he was leading us supernatural to move forward. For instance, I got out of the hospital and the first thing I did, I was, I, I was an officer in the BSU, Baptist Student Union uh, organization in college. And I had drifted away a little, but I came back and we were going, they were going to the state convention here in Texas. So I said immediately, I, I want to stay on track with what the Lord is doing in my life. I went with them to the Baptist Student Union. And uh, during that time, where they were giving a missions call. The speaker was giving a missions call. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I've called you for the healing of the nation. Well, I was in pre-med, so I assumed I would be a doctor and I'd end up on the mission field somewhere. But I heard the 
and I forward, the Spirit of God spoke it to me. I went forward, signed my card that I was surrendering to mission. I just figured that's what, that was the only avenue I needed to do. So I did it. Now, when I got up from the altar, there was this beautiful red-haired girl next to me. Mm. And I looked at her, and I got up, and she had surrendered to mission. So I introduced myself. The next week, I asked her out. We went to a truth concert. It, that yeah. was Pam, my wife, and uh, to be. And then the next week, I said, okay, I'm used to going over to Shreveport and Bossier. I don't have to drink. I don't have to do all that stuff. We can just go out to eat. And we can go dancing. I pulled up in front of a nightclub, and she looked at me and said, that looks like hell on the outside. <laughs> so I know Satan must be on the inside. If you want to go in there, you can pick your car back up at the door. <laughs> and I said, well, no, I'll take you back home. All the way home, all I could think was my grandmother had been reincarnated in this woman. <laughs> because she was so much like my grandmother, you know, just point blank. And on the way home, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, marry her. 